and I'm at the silicon chip stand with super designer Nicholas Vinnan. Hey Nicholas. Good morning. Hey. How are um, you? And how's silicon chip going? Oh, fairly well. I think um, everything's you know proceeding as usual. Yep. Uh, and you've lost the beard. I have. Uh, <laughs> yep. Looks good. Thanks. Excellent. Yeah. And still churning out the projects? Yes, uh, we still publish four to five projects a, a month. A month. And yes. most of them are in-house still? Yeah, the majority are, are done by us. Uh, we do yep. get contributed projects. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. these days, nowhere near as many as we used to. Okay. Why do you think that is? Um, look, I think part of it is the, the fact that uh, I think a lot of the projects that people work on these days are sort of personal projects and they don't really think about Right. publishing them or that maybe they don't think they have a, a, a applicability to other people's situations or maybe okay. they just put them on a web page oh, somewhere. Oh, I was going to say, put them yeah, on their own blog or that's whatever. That's true. Or, yep. But, uh, right. you know, there is an advantage of, of putting it in Silicon Chip. You get a pretty mm -hmm. wide readership and yep. um, you do get paid for it as well. And I, I think it's fun. I mean, that's how I got into working for Silicon yeah. Chip. I contributed a project. Uh, yep. And, and they liked it. And they, yes. Yeah. And I really enjoyed not just designing the project, getting their feedback, improving it, but also writing the article and, and getting yep. it published. It is very satisfying. It is. Yeah, yeah seeing your uh, first article in print. Yes. Yeah. yeah I, in I fact, I was saying yep. the other day, didn't you get have an article in the, in the very first silicon chip? Oh, or, no, uh, it wouldn't have been in the first silicon oh, chip. It was an I had early a, one, I think. Oh, yeah, probably mm. a long time ago mm. in a galaxy far, far away. Yeah, because when did silicon chip start? 1987. 1987, mm. yep, yep. So... Oh, goodness. So, we've got some projects to show. Yes. Uh, show us. All right. Well, right. the one that, that almost everybody's been commenting about, actually, yep. is this one, which is it's several years old now, but it <laughs> obviously has a lot of retro appeal. It's a, a Nixie clock. Nixie clock. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Um, and uh, this, is, this is sold as a kit uh, by a company called Gless Audio. Right. I don't know exactly how much it costs. It's around $150, I believe. Mm -hmm. But basically, you, it's difficult to get Nixie tubes these days, so... Uh, it's a good way to, to build this thing, and it's basically a conversation piece. Yep. So yeah, you've, they, so they have to source those from somewhere. Uh, my so. understanding is, and I know this is maybe a, like an urban legend, <laughs> but I think he, he bought a truckload of Nixie tubes <laughs> for, 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 a low, for a low price, and he's been selling kits for the Nixie clock ever since. <laughs> right, got it. It's one of those things, you buy a truckload of stuff and you go, yeah, yeah what I'll make do a project, what do yeah. I do? I'll make a project and sell the parts. We, we, we have some advertisers where that seems to be their business model. <laughs> right, I won't, yes. I won't name them. No, I think I know who they are. All yeah. right. What else? Oh, look, this is um, well, exciting for you uh, Tube fans. Yes, this is this another is, retro project. Yeah, a project um, they haven't released yet. No, we've had no. a lot of demand for it, so we yep. finally caved in and we're going to publish a stereo valve amplifier. A stereo valve yes. amp. How much pressure is there from the um, old guard? To <laughs> well, I mean, there's, there, obviously there are two camps. There's the people who say, why bother? And then yeah. there's the people who, who are really enthusiastic about it. My feeling is basically just, if we're going to do it, we should do a, as good a job as possible. Yep. And I, I've taken some, some modern approaches here. Mm -hmm. the, the whole thing is built on, almost all the components are on a single double-sided PCB. Yep. So, and it's designed so that there's not a lot of tricky construction. It's basically just a matter of fitting all the components. Right. And it yeah, should, I can see that. It looks, uh, so it's just going to fit into a, just a, like a similar box to what we have on these sort well, of Well, the idea is that well, it's, it's, it's actually going to be put into a, a plinth, effectively. So it's right. going to be made from, from just basically a square of timber. Oh, okay. It, right. drops, it drops down yep. to the top. We're going to have a clear acrylic cover on top oh, so you can you see got, the board. Because you've got to see the tubes yeah. light up. No, the tubes yep. will, of course, the power tubes will stick out the top. Oh, they'll of the, stick out. Of course um, they will. Yeah. Uh, but you'll be able to see all the components, the board. Right. Uh, the power supply of the transformer will be underneath. Mm -hmm. And then we'll have a front and a rear panel. Front, um, but some of the things we've done on this is uh, we've have the possibility of having remote volume control, which is probably something that not a lot of valve amplifiers have. Okay. Um, how and how are you doing that? Uh, how are you going to implement that? It's there's a little board. Uh, I think there might be a picture of it there. Oh, okay. uh, it has yep. a microcontroller on it. It fits underneath the. It just sort of hangs off the the valve right. amp board, and that drives the motorized pot. Yep. So. Um, We've also sort of modernized the power supply a bit. Uh, the actual amplif amplification itself is all based on valves, but in the power supply we have a high voltage transistor which is there as a, as a ripple filter. Right. So that should uh, give it a nice clean, quiet sound without having to have a massive choke or anything like that, which would be the traditional way to, to filter the HT. Uh -huh. um, we also have a, a turn-on delay for the HT so that the filaments can warm up first. Okay, yep. Um, and that's done by the same transistor. Um, nice. So, so there are a few refinements. I mean, it yeah. is a pretty traditional design. It's, it's very similar to a Mullard valve amplifier right. design, but uh, we've done a few, tw few tweaks there. Nice, nice. Yeah. And uh, so it'll be available as a kit? 
Altronics are seriously considering doing a kit. I would be surprised if they didn't. Right. But I can't guarantee anything okay. at this stage. Can they source the vowels? Are they, 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 they are a catalogue item. Okay. Um, I'm right. not sure. My understanding is they don't have a lot of stock right now, but they probably would be looking at, obviously, if they're going to do a kit, they're going, to, they're going to yep. refresh their stocks. How much effort went into the tube sound? Was there well, a, <laughs> your eyes almost rolled there. Well, we, yeah, okay. Look, I'm not a, personally. I'm not a. I, I'm not a big fan of, of tube sound. I yeah. think solid state amplifiers are, are the way to go. But it's as I said, it's a pretty traditional design, yeah. uh, and it should therefore operate. You know, you know, give you the, the similar sound. In fact, if you look at the circuit, compare it to some of the Mallard designs, there isn't a lot of difference. So right. I expected it'll it'll sound very similar to those, and they 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 have a pretty good reputation. Yep, got it. With so, their one percent distortion or whatever, uh, have, well, you, have you actually measured it? Uh, there is a prototype that wasn't built on the PCB that mm -hmm. was measured. Um, I think it was it was under one percent. It was maybe right. 0 0.3 or 0 0.4 yep. at 10 watts, or something. And then obviously it goes up as you push of it harder. Yep. Um, the interesting thing about this actually is the one of the trickiest things about designing a valve amplifier these days mm -hmm. is the output transformers. Oh, okay. So you, How you, are you doing that? Well, what what this is actually Alan Linton Smith's idea. He realised that you can use a hundred volt line transformer as an output transformer. Oh, okay. So you right. drive drive just, the just just your regular audio like a PA type transformer. That's right. Transformer. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Some of them happen to have tappings for the various power levels right. that equate to a centre tap and then two that are roughly twenty percent from each end, and then you can use that in an ultra linear configuration, which is ah. what the Mallard design had. Basically, you have feedback to the output valves from the transformer that helps yep. cancel out some of the non-linearity of the transformer. Nice! Mm. That's novel. Yes. I like it. Oh, looking forward to seeing that. And I'm sure a lot of uh, aficionados, we don't have a schematic, sorry folks, but that is a preview of the article mm -hmm. coming up in silicon chip. What else do we have? Uh, another item that's been very popular recently are these uh, majestic speakers that are on either side of the stand. Yep. And I'm personally... Was these very are a kit? Uh, well, it's not a kit as such. The cabinet is actually a Bunnings kitchen cabinet, so you can buy that effectively as a kit. <laughs> right. And then you drill the holes in, and put the drivers in there, add a crossover, and that's basically it. Got it. There's a little bit of work involved, but yep. um, I like them so much that I paid the, the designer to build these for me. Oh, and, there uh, you go. They, uh, they sound fantastic They sound really valve good. <laughs> well, well, they, they would, exactly. yes. They sound yeah, fantastic yeah. with any amplifier, yep. basically. I mean, yep. they have a frequency response pretty much flat down to 20 hertz, so okay. not really any audible roll-off. Uh, and the, the tweeters are very nice and smooth and, and because they're a two-way design there isn't a lot of firstly they're very efficient and yep. secondly there's only one crossover and it's quite a smooth crossover Got it. so there's you can't really pick any obvious mm -hmm. peaks or, over or, or the bumps over right. the, this frequency very range. nice yeah, very so, nice um, and we yeah. have an SDR radio. We do. Um, I can show you what's yeah. inside oh, this yeah. one. Yeah, show us what's inside. There we go. There's so not much. No, not a lot. Well, it's a lot of the work is done by this uh, yeah, of course. This dongle here. USB dongle. That's yep. nice. you got the cutout in the board with mm -hmm. just the USB at the back uh, Yes, well, that, the that's there. right. Well, there's only one connection to make. And what right. it does is it taps the power off the USB to run the rest of the circuitry oh, as well. Oh, excellent. Mm. So excellent. You, are, you have two modes, either a straight pass-through where this, you know, your, your antenna, there are two antenna connections, one for VHF, UHF, and one for the yep. other lower frequencies. So with this switch off, the VHF, UHF just goes straight through the dongle to your computer, and you uh -huh. can then tune in, right. uh, you know, whatever the dongle's range, frequency range is. But if you then power it up, you then have this um, up converter circuitry with a tuned front end. Nice. So you can then switch between, I think, five different ranges mm -hmm. in the low frequency, low, mid, and high frequency end of the spectrum. Uh, and so you can tune in a particular frequency, and then it's shifted up by 125 megahertz, yep. so that the dongle can, uh, can, can actually receive that. Mm -hmm, can receive that. Yeah. And in fact, Fantastic. the software has the capability to compensate for that, because right. it's a fairly common technique. Yep. So you can then just dial in whatever frequency you want, mm -hmm. and uh, away you go. And you're just using off-the-shelf off the software for that open yes. source? Yes. Is it open called, source software? I, not, I believe so. I think right. it's called STR Hash. Right. Uh, so, and, well, yeah. there's a screenshot of it yeah, yeah. down in there. So yeah. uh, people have been saying that, that this beats some fairly expensive communications receivers yep. in terms of capabilities. And of course with a tuned front end that gives you pretty good rejection of, of mirrors and so on, right. mirror image frequencies. Yep. Very nice. And that's a Jim Rowe design. It is. Uh, Jim Rowe, I was looking through some old Electronics Australia magazines dating back to the 60s and there's mm. Jim with his yep. projects. Fantastic. He's yep. still going. How old is Jim? I believe he's in his early 70s. Early 70s, is yeah. that all? Okay. Um, <laughs> I know, he's been going forever. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> so. well, he's still producing pro projects for us now, and he Fantastic. also does all our diagrams. Yep. 
So, and, yeah, yeah, former managing director of Electronics Australia That's magazine. That's right, as is uh, Leo Simpson, yeah, who's our, yeah, our current editor yeah, and publisher. Yeah, had a stick so there as well. They were both both colleagues and rivals at yes, various points. Yes, they were. And uh, all right, what else? Automatic reverse uh, the oh, DCC well, this, this model is, railway. This is basically control. just showing off our, our website at the moment. Uh, okay. Oh, so right. it's, okay. it's it's cycling through the pages of our of yep. our online issues. Got it. Um, which I, um, I'm quite happy about because we now have nearly 11 years worth of issues up online. Fantastic. So, Everyone's waiting for the EA archive though. Oh uh, yeah, we'd yeah. love to do that. <laughs> uh, my understanding is that there are some thorny copyright issues there. Yeah, there's there. copyright issues there. Uh, and it's, yeah, yeah, anything exactly. that was contributed, it may not have necessarily transferred the copyright over to EA. Yeah, so, so mm. I don't know. but. We we have discussed on a number of occasions. I mean, the other the other issue is just the time that it would take to actually scan the, all the issues. Yeah. But we'd love to do it one day, and we hope we will. Awesome! Thank you very much, Nicholas. Thank you. Enjoy all the right. show.